Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Inside Michigan Recruiting, where we talk to many of the top prospects that make their way to campus on a weekly basis during the spring, but we're going to be going into the summer and the fall talking to prospects as they make their way to campus. Start of the Sharon Moore era. Got off to a great start as far as we were concerned last week with one of the top running backs in the country in Jordan Davison. This week, we're talking to one of the top receivers in the country in Quincy Porter, who makes his way to the Michigan Insider Studio. Quincy, yeah. how you doing? Good. I'm doing great. i glad that you could make your way over to us. Now, this is not your first time in Ann Arbor, so what number Michigan visit is this for you? Uh, this is number three. Number three. So yeah. take me back to the first couple of visits that you took to Michigan and what yeah. kind of stood out about those experiences. Well, the first one was just the first visit, first time being there, really getting to see the place and talk to the coaches. The next time was at a barbecue, so okay. I get to see something from a different view. And this time around, it's more as being with the players, trying to see like what it's like to be a, a Michigan player from like their eyes. So let's rewind the tape even before the Michigan visits. Mm. And before recruiting kind of blew up for you, because I'm, I'm curious when you realize that this is going to be, like, you're a big-time guy. You're a big time prospect. I talked to Brian Doan about it, who I'm sure you know, mm -hmm. and he said he knew you were going to be a big time prospect, true freshman. Mm -hmm. Did you know it at that time, or did you feel like that was going to be, it was going to be that way even before you entered high school? Uh, Really, I didn't really think of it as that. I kind of just like, this is football, this is what I have to do. Mm -hmm. So I haven't really thought about being this, being that, just, mm -hmm. you know, just play and do, be the best. So when did Michigan first start getting on your radar? Uh, it was like just like a practice or something like that where they were coming to see us. And mm -hmm. Coach Newsom came and watched me work out. And after the workout, yeah, he offered me. Okay. All right. So you mentioned you've had some prior experiences with Michigan. This time around, really able to get immersed with, with the players and see some practice as well. So kind of take me into that experience what your biggest takeaways have been as you've been able to connect with the players and even get closer with some of the coaches here? Uh, yeah, it's been a great experience uh, speaking with Coach Bellamy, all the other coaches. And, like, today we're able to, you know, kind of see what class is like mm -hmm. and kind of see what it truly really is to be, like, a, a Michigan student, a Michigan player. So you mentioned Coach Bellamy, your would-be position coach if you yeah. were to come to Michigan. What's the vibe like with him? What's the connection like with Coach Bell? It's, it's great. We have a, you know, great, great conversations. It's just great. Everything's good with him. So you, there, there are a couple of ways in which you can connect with the coach. There's the technical aspect of it, where it's the drills and the X's and O's yeah. and the player development. Then there's the personal yeah. connection, the relationship piece. Are you further along in one aspect than another? Like what, what are your impressions of him as a as a player development guy, and what are your impressions of him just as a guy, as a guy who would be your mentor away from home? Uh, I would say both, both like speaking to him out of football and then of course speaking to him about football, with football, and of course talking to the players and hear what they have to say about him too. So okay. everything's been good and positive. So specific players, any interactions kind of jump out at you of players you've connected with since you've been here on Michigan's campus? Um, getting to sit in one of the classes with one of the mm -hmm. players, it was, that was real. That was real good. Any other receivers specifically you've been able to connect with very much here? Uh, I just spoke with a few of them. Okay. I mean, today I got to speak with a former Michigan player, Nico Collins. So that okay. was great. Yeah. All right. So what about quarterbacks? That's I mean, every yeah. receiver. Yeah. Is paying attention to who the quarterback is. So I'm. Um, you know, you got the guys that have been here, like Alex Orgy and Denigal, but mm. you got the future guy yeah. in Jane Davis. So were you familiar with any of those guys before this visit? Uh, I never knew them, like, personally, but I got to see him practice today and see, like, how good he really was and not just from, like, recruiting size. I actually got to see how he really was. You mean, who are, who's specific, Jaden? Yeah. So tell me about what are your impressions of Jaden? Oh, uh, the way, like, he threw the ball, how easy it looked for him to throw the ball. Okay. All right. So what about Coach Moore? What's the what's the vibe like with Coach Moore? Oh, it, it's great. It was, it was good. We sat in his office the other day, and we had a real good conversation. Okay. And then Coach Newsom being a Garden State guy, I imagine that's a that's a connection as well. What's the what's that connection like with Coach Newsom? 
uh, really close. Well, it actually really started with um, my receiver coach at Bergen. He knew him, and that's kind of how, like, the relationship started. And then, of course, I get to speak with him, and now we have pretty much a close relationship. All right. So even as the as the old line coach, he's still keeping his mm-hmm. keeping his connection with you yeah. as the area recruiter. Yeah. All right. Obviously, before you came over to Michigan, you had the trip down to Ohio State. So let's yeah. talk about some of the other places mm-hmm. that you've been. Not necessarily your top list of schools, but yeah. just the places you've been recently. So the Buckeyes, what did you think of your time down in Columbus? And what number of visit to Columbus was that for you? That was my second. Okay. Yeah, I've been there before sometime like in the summer last year. Mm-hmm. But it, it, it was good. I actually got to see practice and... It was, I think the first time we were there, it was more focused on the 24, so this time it was kind of like more focused on me, mm-hmm. got to see practice, and got to see stuff that we didn't see before. All right, so you, practice was obviously a big takeaway, but if we were to highlight the, the, the biggest things that you took away from the visit, like specifically, what would you highlight as the, as the standout moments from that time in Columbus? I would say speaking with Heartline and Coach Day. Mm-hmm. Just getting in a good conversation with them, speaking to them like one-on-one and stuff like that. So, you know, obviously they've had a run of receivers yeah. there, of top-tier receivers. Yeah. They put it up a lot. What about that? Is that like a major appeal to you that they've had so many guys that they've developed over the I mean, yeah, of course, because I'm a receiver. I want to be in that position where... NFL, or they also, and the NFL players that they have are like, they're doing good in the NFL. It's not just they're getting there, but they're also succeeding in the NFL. So their style of offense, where they are obviously going to put the ball up a ton. Yeah. Is that part of the, uh, is that more appealing to you than, say, an offense that maybe runs the football a little bit more? Like, how much of that spread versus pro style do you, is that a factor in your decision at all? Yeah, of course it'll be a factor. I just have to find, like, you know, the right fit and everything. Like, of course I want to be able to catch the ball, but mm-hmm. a pro style also is something you really need. So so what about Coach Day? What did you think of Ryan Day? Uh, it was good. It was good. Like, you kind of spoke mostly about how their school was and, um, of course, their background because mm-hmm. they have a really good background. All right. What about the young quarterbacks there? Did you get a chance to connect with any of those guys? Uh, not really much, but... I did get to see them and speak to some of them. So. Okay. All right. So Penn State, another top-tier Big Ten program mm. who you got a chance to see. They obviously recruit your area a ton. Yeah. So what about what about the Nittany Lions? What did you think of your visit there? Good. Coach Hagen's kind of um, showed me clips of stuff I could do mm-hmm. good at, stuff I was good at, stuff I could do better at. Okay. So that was good. So Coach, Coach Franklin, he has a reputation – as an outstanding recruiter, as mm-hmm. a coach who's really able to connect with players and families. Mm-hmm. Did you get that vibe from him when you were there? Yeah, for sure. For sure. He, yeah, we kind of spoke to him in his office and things like that. And everybody was there. My family was there. So it was great. So what stands out to you stands out to you the most about Penn State at this point? Uh, I'll say the most is pretty much the coaches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So other places that you've been, say, in the last couple of months would be where? Oklahoma, okay, and Florida and Florida State, which was in January. All right, so let's talk about Oklahoma. Yeah, another school that puts it up a ton. Yeah, who have receivers that they put. Yeah, in the league. So what stood out to you about your time down there in Norman? Of course, their pass for receivers right. with CD and yeah, uh, Coach Venables, high energy guy too. So mm-hmm. I, I, that, I really like that. And speaking with Coach Jones. Okay, so um, Florida and Florida State. Uh, to, uh, I mean, you talk about rivalries, we're going to talk about that coming up. I wonder when you visit those schools, first, what stuck out, stuck out about them? And do you feel the rivalry when you go to Florida State, the rivalry of Florida, when you go to Florida, the rivalry of Florida State? Uh, I don't know, maybe because it was my first time around, not so much, but you could definitely tell they're rivals for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, Florida, speaking with Coach Gonzalez, who also has a great background right. with receivers as well. Yeah, he's had a number of guys there in this couple of stops. Every time I think I think about Percy Harvin, that's one of his mm-hmm. one of his guys as well. Uh, their styles of offense. I mean, how do they compare with the other places you've been? Whether it be you know, we talk about Ohio State and Michigan, and mm-hmm. the appeal of those offenses. What can you say about that? 
Well, I can say with Florida State, it kind of seemed like they had a lot of bigger receivers in mm -hmm. the past, which, of course, I'm kind of a bigger receiver, so that's something like I kind of try to do with Coach Dukas and things like that. Mm -hmm. Now, are all these schools, I mean, different schools have different depth charts, yeah. right? Now, obviously, a talent like you is going to be able to play anywhere, but there are going to be some depth charts that are more loaded than others. Mm -hmm. Does that factor into your equation at all? Um, I, would, I would say not that much because I feel like I'm going to do the work either way, wherever mm -hmm. I go. So, Okay. So let's dig into your criteria, Quincy. Let's not talk about the schools. Mm -hmm. Independent of the schools, what are you looking for? In a, in a program? Mm, I'll say the three major things. Like, one would be education, of course, where I can get a great education, a chance to win a national title, mm -hmm. and a school that can help develop me to the next level. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's pretty easy to assess. As you're, what do you want to major in edu on the education side? Uh, Probably finance. Okay. Yeah. So it's pretty easy to assess, you know, the, the academic... Yeah. reputation of, of the different schools, right? Mm -hmm. It's pretty easy to assess their how much they compete for national championships. You can see teams yeah. who made the playoffs. Harder to assess, it would seem, development. Yeah. I mean, in like, what, what kind of metric do you put to it? Do you just look at how many guys they put in the first round? Do you look at are there a specific sort of de developmental uh, skills or – or mm -hmm. drills that you look at? How do you assess development or developmental acumen? Of a I say it's like all, a combine of all different things. Like, of course, their past, which matters a lot because who they have coming in. Um, like, of course, drills, the things that get me better. Mm -hmm. And like just being a coach, some of them, you know, like will help with things that they see that I could do better at, of course, at right now, which of course would happen if mm -hmm. I were at the school and everything. And at the practices, seeing how they they uh, they coach and teach. So when you go on these visits, you know, I'm curious again, independent of the school. I mean, how do you how do you separate the because these are all good schools. Mm -hmm. Most of these schools have competed for national championships recently. Yeah. You know, even have won them. Yeah. So how do you separate the wheat from the chaff? Like when you go on a campus, yeah, what makes one visit better than the other? I would say the relationship with the coaches. And I actually got to speak to Nico Carls and like ask him what helped him make his decision. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like who, who helps show more level, what feels right in home. I got you. What All felt right. really home for him, which I think I have to find that for me. So how do you how do you figure out? Because look, you're gonna get you're gonna get the you know the red carpet treatment mm -hmm. everywhere you go. So how do you determine what's a pitch and from and what's genuine? I mean, do you have a, a good read on that yet? It would have to be with the relationships and just how many times you speak with them and really, like, dive deep to see, like, is he really genuine? Is he not? Mm -hmm. So timeline. You know, every guy does it differently. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be one of those guys who waits all the way until signing day to make a decision? Do you want to get it done? Well, let, let's start off first with yeah. narrowing down your list. Like, when are you going to narrow down your list? Uh, I would say that would probably come soon mm -hmm. with everything. Um, but for commitment, I definitely would do it before my football season starts. Really? So yeah. you're looking to do it be in the summer maybe yeah. or even sooner than that? Yeah. Prob we'll, it's pretty much we'll see. Okay. Yeah. So any other visits that you know you're going to take unofficially before you start getting into officials? Well, right now we're just going to take in from these past visits and then decide what we're doing next mm -hmm. and everything. We is an operative word here. Yeah. Because no one in your position gets there by himself, right? Mm -hmm. So your your circle, your support system is huge in this. So let's talk. Mm -hmm. And your whole family is here today. Yeah. Right? So that that's big, man. What? How big has that been in your eyes? How much has that meant to you being where you are today? Well, yeah, they're a big role in my decision and everything. And... Of course, they, that's kind of the reason why I'm here. So, so let's talk about specific ed, kind of advice. What they've emphasized as the most important things to look for, starting with mom. Like when she talks to you about your your recruitment, what does she emphasize? What does she want you to look for? What does she want you to look at? Well, what does she tell you? Well, she's more like education, looking at education. Mm -hmm. I would say, yeah. So that really 
that really stands out. Yeah. Now, how, have you done that? Have you gone through and sort of stacked up the academic reputations of each of the schools yet, or is that still something that's on the horizon? Well, that's kind of both. Mm-hmm. Like, we spoke to most schools. We spoke to, like, academics and everything like that. Okay. New meetings with that, yeah. All right, so, Pops, what is what is Dad sort of stressed in the recruiting process that, look, son, I want you to look at X, Y, and Z. What does he highlight? Uh, probably football and, like, who they have on the death chart mm-hmm. and things like that. Okay. What about your brother? Well, <laughs> him... <laughs> Gotta throw that in there, right? Oh, he he's he's looking for himself right now. <laughs> he can, he's taking in um he gets to take in schools and what he likes so it'd be easier for him when he gets in my shoes. Right. So is do you guys ever talk about, hey, we could do this, we could do this college thing together? Well, personally, I'll I'll allow him to do his own thing. I want him to do his own thing. Mm-hmm. Let him decide where he wants to go. But what if what if baby brother wants to play with big brother? What about that? I have no problem with that. So you're not gonna put your finger on the scale? He could he could play with me. He's gonna be playing with me this year. Right. Yeah, at high school. So wherever he wants to go is where he wants to go. So. I hear you. I hear you. All right. So as you as you move closer to a narrowing down your list and then b making a decision, what have you thought about what that's gonna look like? Because of course you have the mm-hmm. input from your circle, from the people mm-hmm. who love and support you. Yeah. But again, different guys weigh that differently. Some, when they get to the end, they said, okay, I've taken everyone's input. I'm going to go sit in the solitude of wherever I make my decision. I'm going mm-hmm. to make that decision. Others say, mm-hmm. we're going to do, like it, do it like it's a round table. Yeah. We're going to sit around. I'm going to take all your feedback, and we're going to come to this decision together. Have you thought about how you're going to do it when the time comes? Uh, I'll say it's like both. Like I'm gonna get their input, of course, mm-hmm. and then you know I'll have what they say they don't like and what they do like, and then of course it's gonna still be what my decision, but it's also gonna be off of their input. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I appreciate you taking the time here today because one of the things that stands out to me is you're not really caught up in the show. Of, I mean, we're doing the show right now, mm-hmm. but this is not like you don't seek the spotlight as far as the cameras are concerned. Yeah. Is that just how you are, or is that more a conscious effort, like, look, let the main, keep the main thing the main thing? Uh, it's kind of both, really. It's, it's also how I am, but football is really, that's what I'm here for. That's what I do, so. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now, as we look at, to your, your season at, at Bergen, I mean, you got, mm-hmm. keep talking about keeping the main thing the main thing. What does is, what is next year look like? Because I imagine to... Say, I got to get this out of the way before my senior season yeah. is concerned. That's a big part of the reason why, so you can focus on your senior yeah. season. Is that right? Yeah, definitely to focus on my on my team, on my season. And we're going for four straight, so that's okay. the goal right there. I got you. As far as your game, let's pretend for a second that I'm a coach or a scout in the stands and I'm watching Quincy Porter do his thing. Now, this is the time. I sound like a really humble guy, mm-hmm. but I want you to give me an honest assessment. If you're that guy in certain aspects of the game, I want you to say that. Kind of break down your game. Give me the, give me the the skill set, mm-hmm. the the things that really stand out. Maybe even a, a player comparison that people compare you to, or that you compare yourself to. Uh, I would say my understanding of the game is something that's pretty good. Um, be a catch radius, of course. Mm-hmm. I have the ability to do that, and play other positions, not just outside. Okay. So one of the things that stands out to me, like you said, I mean, really, really versatile. But for a long guy, you're not just a catch radius guy. You got some some yeah. long speed too, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much what I've been doing track. So I did track my freshman year. I'm going back to track now. So. Okay. Yeah. People didn't think I could juke either, but I was like, I showed them. So. So you got some of that. So is there a player in college or the pros that people compare you to or that you try to emulate? Uh. So, some people say Julio Jones. Some people say uh, Megatron. Okay, Megatron. Yeah. All right. So talking, speaking my language, when you talk about one of the all-time lion greats. Yeah. Um, as you look ahead to your senior season and improvements, mm-hmm. what what are the things that you're? Where every guy is always trying to get yeah. better. So what are the things that you're focused on the most as far as improvement is concerned? I pretty much say all around. I say um, speed, working in the slot more. And pretty much everything releases everything. Okay. All right. So I want to close things out focused on 
on Michigan for a second. You're fresh off the visit. Yeah. What stood out to you? What do you like the most about me? Because you told me what stood out. What do you like the most about Michigan right now? And what do you still have kind of questions about? What it, What do you still, like, I, I'm not quite sure about this, if there's anything like that. I would say there isn't really right now questions yet. I say that I could probably have more later on. Mm-hmm. But, of course, I like the, the QB situation is pretty good. Um, and, of course, they're also fresh off a national championship mm-hmm. team. So. so everything's good all around. Well, listen, Quincy, appreciate you really taking the time. Wish you nothing but luck the rest of the way. Thank you. If we want to check for you, are you going to be competing in any camps or, or combines here in the in the coming months, or is that kind of behind you at this point? Yeah, really just be focusing on my season coming up. I'm not going to be really doing camps and uh, sound all sets. Think you taking any officials before you make a decision, or is this is it just going to be over with the unofficials? Uh, well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. That's to be determined. So. Gotcha. Hey, man, appreciate your time, and good luck the rest of the way. Yeah, thank you. All right, folks, that'll do it for another edition of Inside Michigan Recruiting. Be sure to check out the YouTube page. We'll have plenty more of these coming up. Also, I want to point your attention to the latest episode of Steady Dropping Dimes, former Michigan quarterback Devin Gardner. Attended spring practice, gave you a rundown of everything that he saw. We're going to have more episodes coming up. We're going to get the recruiting insider started back up as well, so a lot more to come over on the Michigan Recruiting Insider. Be sure to check it out. We'll see you next time.